I would love to greet you, brother and sisters, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and our Savior, who died to the cross of Calvary for our sins, the one who, come, who came to justify us, to die and to pay the price for us. An innocent man who sacrificed his lives for you and I, so that we must be able to go closer to our Father as a creator. Bless you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this hour. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Let the grace of God be upon your life for you to welcome me in your house, in your car, in your family through this message. I am Apostle Charles Simfgui. I have a short message that I want to share with you. And this message, the topic, that is who told you. It is very important for you to understand there is some issues in your lives. There is some issues in your marriage. There is the things that is moving in your life, in your situations. Things are not going the same. But I have a question for you. Who told you? Because there is some things that you need to understand. Where did you get that information? Who told you? That is a message I want to share with you. Together we must understand where are we going. Because we are going somewhere and we are coming from somewhere. So you want to understand that God he loves you. So who told you? That is a message I want to share with you. Who told you? Whatsoever you are saying, any things you are saying, any things, who told you? So let us quickly go in the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. The Bible says, And do not be conformed to this world, to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you must prove that is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. The Bible says this is Apostle, Apostle Paul, who wrote the letter. This man of God, he wanted to encourage people of Rome. He said that, and do not be conformed, do not be compared. Do not do the same things as the people in the world they are doing. You need a difference even we are living in the earth. Because Jesus says we are living on the earth in this world, but we are not belong to this world. So he said, and do not be conformed to this world, present world, to this age, to this system of the world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, very important, be transformed by renewing your mind, very important that a message, this man of God is shaped. So be transformed, which means it needs a complete change in everything that we are doing. Everyone is expecting change in your life. In your situations. Change is very important. In a church. In a ministry. In your career. You need change. Another way you need something new. So now Paul says. Do not be conformed. But be transformed. He need transformations. In another way. He need change to happen. In our lives. To become a different. So we need a change. And this change, it needs spiritually and physically, mentally, emotionally, in everything it needs changed. So that's why we need a change even spiritually. We don't need to become religious, but we need a change so that we must go to understand what is the will of God in our lives and what Jesus did to the cross of Calvary. So spiritually change and physically change, it's very important. It need, 
you must it's a must because when there is no change things are not gonna move so this man of god he says be transformed by renewing of your mind for transformations transformations is a change and the change is very important in our lives so change in our lives because it infect and the impact all of us at the same point at the same time in lives we need a new thing we need growth in all and we need to improve in another way we need to take a necessary steps change it necessary in our lives to complete goals and fulfill the dreams brother and sister it's very important for you to understand that change is very important so paul says be transformed by renewing of your mind you need a change something new in your life something new in your marriage we are tired with religious things we need something new that is gonna bless and send that far to the glory of god now there is a situation that you need to understand they cannot be forward in your life in your ministry in your career if you don't renew your mind transformations of your mind so boy he found that there is a problems in the mind and it need to be transformed it need people to understand transformations it is necessary change it is necessary completely changed new things we need growth so that it to come from immaturity to the maturity so it need transformations and that transformations not only to be born again but we need to renew our mind to arrive on the level of understanding the work Jesus did to the cross of Calvary so because of that you need to understand brother and sister your mind need to be renewed you been wasting time because your mind problems it's your mind how many opportunity that you lost in your lives that you miss in your life because of your mind how many relationship that are broken because of your mind so when you pray you are asking yourself sometimes we say the wizards which craft in my family which craft in my mama my, my, my family my neighbors they are witching me but you don't know that your mind also is witching you because your mind is witching you witching your marriage witching your business witching your uh, co communications and contact with people because of your mind your mind now the bible says because of your mind and not renew you will keep turning around turning around turning around we are breaking we are destroying we are binding we are doing everything to bind to break to destroy the work of the enemy but we need to come to understand that your mind we need also to deal with your mind your mind also have a problems people are coming in the church but they have a problems in their mind we need to deliver your mind and your mind cannot be delivered if you don't get education so transformations of mind it need education educations it is something great that if we need to break a spirit of poverty in our society in our community in the entire world in africa i found the problems it's about mentality it's about the renewing of mind in africa when africans they don't renew mind we can't move forward all things it depends with your mindset now brother and sister the bible says that you renew your mind why because there is informations now when that informations as long as it's still inside of you you can't move forward you are turning around you are turning around in the same things in the same things happen today next year the following year same things there is nothing that will change because your mind are not yet renew so make effort to renew your mind renewing your mind it need education when you read the bible the bible says when jesus christ 
he entered in that temple, he found the elders that was there, that was seated there. And Jesus, he entered and he took a book. He began to read in that book. He said that, no, the spirit of the Lord. Not the spirit of gossiping, not the spirit of poverty, not the spirit of division, the spirit of glory, the spirit of power is upon me. God has anointed me to preach and to heal the broken heart. Those elders, they were surprised and say, Why did this small boy, why did the young this man man he get the knowledge, you know? So he understood the Bible. These people, they say that. This is an idol. This is over. A young boy like this, where he get this knowledge, Jesus Christ, he came to preach the good news. You need the good news so that your mind must be renewed. A good news it needs in your life. If you read with me, Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. The Bible read, Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, Adam answered, I have heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I am naked. He said, God, he called him, Where are you? Adam says, I heard your voice. In the garden, but I had, I had in myself, I did not come closer to respond to your voice because I, have, I did not have clothes. I am naked. But the Bible says God was surprised for that information that Adams gave to God. Because you remember the Bible says that God, he always, when God created Adam and A, Adam was inside God. He was living with God. Every day, God and Adam, they was having fellowship. The fellowship is very important. We're having a fellowship with God. Now the Bible says when Adam he just sin, sin, what is a sin? Since it is disobedient to the God command. That is a sin. Sin is disobedient. So now God, what he did, he Adam is sin. So when Adam sinned, the Bible says that he, Adam he came out of God. Because when he was inside God, he was hearing the voice of God closer. When God speaks to him, he hear. When God call him, he understand. When so there was in the fellowship, there was in the collaborations. But when Adam moved from God presence, from God presence inside of God, he found that you know he started hearing the voice of God from far away. When the Bible says God. He called him. Where are you? He said, I heard your voice from far. I cannot come closer because I don't have a clothes. But God said, who told you? The problem is when people sin, the first things to do is running away from the presence of God. No, I am a sinner. I cannot go to the presence of God because I sin. My brother and sister, God he is the one who is qualified for your sins. If you are run away from God presence. You are running away. You want to go and kill yourself because you die. Sin it is God's business. When you sin, you don't need to run away from God. I love the prodigal son. When he ran away from his father, he received whatsoever he wanted. He went far away from his family. He went and used everything. But this guy is there and began to suffer. The Bible says when he renew his mind, that's why transformations of mind, he will send you to your opportunity. He will send you to your glory. When you renew your mind, the door of glory, he will come unto you. This young man, I 
as long as he was there, oh, he did not renew his mind. He was suffering. But the day when he said, no, it's over. Enough is enough, my sister. Enough is enough, my brother. Enough is enough, my pastor. Enough is enough, bishop. Enough is enough, church of God. We need to understand it's over. New things need to begin. Need new things need in our lives. This mind, he changed his mind. He renewed the mind. He said, I'm going back to my father. When you renew your mind, you see change completely. Something new. There is a force, information that is inside of you. It's what God was dealing with Adam. Who told you? Where did you get that information? Where did you get that information? Who told you? So when he eat, he said, I heard your voice, but I was afraid. We did not receive the spirit of fear. We did not receive the spirit of gossiping. But we received the spirit of God. And you know the first person, a powerful a gossiper, the one who started gossiping, it was the Satan with a human being, with a woman, <laughs> understand? The Bible says that Satan, he went to Eve by asking her, did he really God said? That is a gossiping. Did he really your neighbor say? Did he really your husband say? Did he really your son say? So a first person gossiping, it was Satan with a woman. Now, if we go deeper, that is not my point. But when this prodigal son, he just renew his mind. He decided to go back to his father. He said, I'm going to my father. I don't care what my father will do to me. I don't care what is going to happen. But I care is to go back to my father. God wants you to return back to him. You don't need to run away from God. God is not a lion as we say lion to, for you to eat or to swallow you. No, he is a lion of Judah just to fight your enemy. But when you come to you, he is a great and a merciful father that he wants people to return back to him. Don't run away from your father. Come because he loves you. Now because of that, this prodigal son, he said, I'm going back to my father. He is my father. I'm not going to my neighbor. I'm not going to my friends. I'm not going to my sister. I'm not going to my auntie. I'm not going to my uncle. I'm going to my father. He took a step. He took a decision. He changed and he renewed his mind. And he moved forward. When he moved forward, he changed the mind. He started going to his father. When the father see him, the father did not judge. The father did not condemn him. We need to come out of religious mind by condemning one another, by judging one another. People are running from the presence of God because of our mind. When we see someone sin, we just take that person from the presence of God. Look at the Bible says, all oh, this woman, she was found in the fornication, in the adultery, and they found her. It was not a story. It was there. They see everything. They found them. And they took her to Jesus. If it was in me, they took her to church. They took her to your pastor. They took me out. They bring her to me as a man of God. The first thing is to chase this all this woman out because she is a disgrace to the church. She's bringing shame to the church. She's bringing shame in the family. Oh, but the Bible says her. These people they took this woman to Jesus. They say, Well, Jesus, we found this woman here. Oh, busy in the actions. We found her. 
or fornication we find her in adultery and we bring her to you according to the law of Moses. Moses never bring the law here. It was the law of God to help people how to survive, how to live with neighbor. So that is the law, the commandment. Now the Bible says this according to the law. We need to stone this woman. Oh, Jesus was there. He said yes, but now it is through according to the law of Moses. Now we are not longer in the law of Moses of condemnations of killing oh yeah. We are not long in that time. We are in the time of grace. We are in time of mercy. That the mercy is following her. The mercy is overflow. I am there. They did not know that they make a biggest mistake to take a sinner before the grace. There is a justification. Before the grace, there is no condemnation. Before the grace, there is a mercy. Before the grace, there is a favor. Before the grace, there there is going forward. Oh, they did not know that Jesus was a grace. When they took Jilokama, they are no Sokori Moshaka. They took this woman. They are all here. Jesus was there. He started writing her. He was laughing on them. He asked them, he said, Oh, if there is anybody who found himself, he never seen her. Who found himself, he never seen her. He must be the face to raise his hands and to take a stone to stone this woman. Oh, the Bible says, everybody run away, disappear. When Jesus, he raised his head, he found there is nobody. Only that woman was there. Jesus, he asked that woman, read my Bible. This did read the Bible, my brother. Read my Bible, my preacher. The Bible said, Jesus asked this woman, did I condemn you or judge you? The woman said, no, sir. Jesus said, go and see sin no more. Go. Can you understand the level of the work of Jesus? If it was you, if it was me in my church, straight, I just say, this woman, she don't need to come to church. Because this one, it is a disgrace in the church. We need to have a good testimony. This one, she's not our member. Oh, but Jesus, he was there. He said, go and sin no more because of the grace, full of grace. So now the Bible says, who taught you? That is the question. Adam, where did you get that information? If we are dealing with a new renewing of mind, information that is inside of you, we are dealing the FS informer. Because there is someone who received the first message. The messenger, the first message, it comes from who? Who told you that you are not going to get married? It's my mom. Who told your mom? It is grandma. Because of what, what happened in our family? So who told you that you are going to die poor? No, it was my grandmother. Because in our family, who told you that you are not going to give birth? No, it was my, my grand-grandfather. In our family, that is the problems we are facing. So that information you receive is still working and operating in your life. So who told you that you are not going to get a job? No, who told you that you are not going to get a, a, a money? Who told you that you remain the same? Who told you that your life is not moving? Who told you? Where did you get that information? Where did you get that information? As long as that information is inside of you, they are keeping you somewhere. You cannot see move. You cannot move in your life because there is that information that are keeping Keeping you somewhere there, you need to understand that I need to renew my mind to delete the false information that is keeping me. He don't want me to move in my life. I must declare, declare. I must destroy the information. That's why Jesus, he came to bring a new revolution. He came to bring a good news for you as you are there. There is a good news for you. What they say, 
is not what God says. What your mom says, what witchcraft wizards they say, that is not what God says. Oh, you don't need to be worried about what people say. Be worried about what the heaven says. God is says something for you. Renew your mind by understanding what is the will of God upon you. You are very important before the eyes of God. Even where your people, they don't consider you. But God, they do consider you. You are so precious before the eyes of God. This is the word of God. Who told you? Where did you get that information? It keep you turning around. Israel, they suffered 430 years in Egypt. God, he went to deliver them. When God went to deliver them, God, he took them again 40 years because they was having a certain information in their mind in their brain, that information, God did not want them to go with it in the land of promises. Where there is a honey and milk, God is taking them there. If you read Deuteronomy chapter 8, you start by verse 2, you will find that the story is there. So now, that information is inside of your mind, my sister and brother. That is your first enemy. It is the enemy because it is a wrong information. It is a fake information. And that's why it brings people to become religious. Because we just go to the church as usual. We become religious. That is not the will of God. God, he wants us to renew our mind. So in another way, God, he wants us to grow, spiritual growth, and spiritual, uh, physical growth. Physically, people um, grow, you know, you, 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 but spiritually, it is a problem. When the church is still premature, there is no maturity in you. That is the biggest problem. God cannot bless you. Releasing a lot of money to you because you are not matured. You are crying. God, I want you to bless me. God, I want you. God is still see this person, his mind is still a baby mind. But you look, you are big. You look like you are uh, 20, 30, 40, 60 years old. But you still have a baby mind. God is still waiting for you to renew your mind and to grow spiritual growth. When the church is not a growth, there is no growth, things are not going to move. It needs to grow. Brother and sister, you need to be matured. Immaturity, it is a point that you can't move. There is always problems in your marriage, problems in your business, problems in the church, ministries, everyday problems. People are not matured. If we want the world to know that we are praying the living God, begin to renew our mind so that we must go to the level of growth and matured people. When you are matured, maturity is very important in everything that we are doing. What is the benefit of renewing your mind? What is the impact in the information? What is the influence in the information? And what is the power beyond the information? Because remember, there is an impact in the information. There is an influence in the information. And there is a power in the information. Because when they inform you, it changes your way. It changes your decisions. 
So, which means there is a power, there is an influence, there is an impact in the information. It's because of the impact and the power and the influence, it sent Adam to run away from the presence of God. Don't run away from God's presence. He loves you. Your sin is God's business. So, brother and sister, God bless you. We will continue with this message. You are welcome to the presence of the living God. My name is Apostle Charles Sinfokwe. Be blessed in Jesus' name.